guys, welcome back to Rolling Line. Today we're on my test line because there's been an update and we've got a little bit of AI in here now. now it's, is it in this drawer here? You can say it's something new on the trains. I haven't noticed what these are yet. And if you click on here, go to the seventh drawer. There are now seven drawers in here. And you can see this. Now you get uh, some different uh, signs which will go up on there. We've used the yellow ones. You'll see them dotted about everywhere. I'll explain it in a moment what they do. So what we got? Decouple. So if you have a local and you've got a carriage, you can click decouple. And wherever you place that, it will decouple it. It will actually decouple tenders as well. So if you've got a tendered engine, you may not want to use that one. The stop sign here, here, you can actually um, place that down, decide how long you want it. But it doesn't have to be 10, it can be as long as you want it, it's in seconds. Reverse, will reverse the train. Sound horn, guess what, will sound the horn. Max speed, um, you get, again, you get to choose the speed you want it to be. Um, enable and disable AI drive, and you put this one down. So let's say you've been controlling a train and it goes over the piece of track which you've uh, put this down. And the AI will then take over. Or the other way around, place the bit of track down, or place the sign down next to the piece of track, and it will disable it. Now this one here is for points. Now by default, it can actually choose what line it wants to be on. So it can it can just change the points when it whenever it wants. Maybe you've got something blocked here and it thinks it can get round there, so it will do that. So what you can do here is simply click on it and click on the piece of track and it's upside down but you can say it says uh, disabled ai and it says enabled yeah i don't know why it's upside down maybe if we try this one no they're all upside down so let's get rid of that now we'll be using this a little bit later i'm going to show you how i'm going to do a i've done a run around it doesn't work very well yet we haven't got quite enough ai first of all we're going to look at the loop and in the loop, I put quite a few signals. There, there, there. So you, if you're running two trains, you only need two sets of signals because you've got blocks. But if you, it's really a good idea to create a lot more blocks. Now, other games, a signal will work between this signal and wherever the next signal is. This game doesn't work like that. Now, what you'll notice here. We're using the seminar ones, semaphore ones, seminar, haha, <laughs> right. You can see this one's backwards because they're meant to be placed on the right hand side. And what I've done up there, if you've noticed this with the correct, I've actually just turned the thing upside down. So what you get is the stick for the signal, the pole, and you get the signal. But on the signal itself, you can press Q. So we press Q. And what do you see? You see red. So don't do anything while it's in red. And you got amber, you can do something with zombies. You can lengthen it as much as you want. Now you should lengthen this till you reach the next signal. Because then if a train goes in here, it means that not any train waiting here will not go into that block. So you let, if the train's going out, the signal's at stop. Now it's gonna that train's left and this one's gone and this one's going again. You can switch direction, you can toggle the track. So if you press this button, this red bit will go onto any of the tracks which are local to it. As we've got something on it, I don't really want to do that right now. Uh, maybe we can. Alright, toggle track. Ah, it's not going to do anything because I haven't got a piece of track long enough. Anyway, that's what it will do. It will just flick between the nearest bits of track. Once you've done it, press apply. But the reason why, uh, well, I think I might destroy this one. Well, we'll look at that one afterwards. You'll see it working afterwards. Now, what else we've also got working here is the stop sign, which is here, which is coupled to this piece of track. So this will stop for two seconds, I think. So let's have a look at it. I press Q. Fixed direction, so you can see it's the arrows going this way, it only work that way. So if we were running a train both ways on this platform, this bit of line here wouldn't stop. 
So it's waiting for 10 seconds. We can change that. Let's change it for two seconds. Done. Yes. So the source bit track. See the arrow here. And it will go for the, the nearest ones and it will choose. So it's at the moment it's this one. So this train should stop. When it gets to this piece of track, it should stop. Hopefully, for two seconds. There we go, it's hit that piece of track and now stopped for two seconds. Now what it's waiting for now is this signal to go. Now this signal is... itself between there and then. But as you can see, it works rather well. They are at the signals. And they are stopping and going, but once in a while a train would decide to start reversing. Now I don't know why that is. But it does do it, which is a bit strange. But it does this opens up a world of possibilities, doesn't it? Especially with the route I'm making at the moment, the map I'm making at the moment. You just got to make sure you put enough of these blocks in to make this work. You just put a couple in and start them off. They won't. You will have crashes. So in this example, we are doing a simple point-to-point -point service with a diesel. It will come down to this piece of track here. The, the uh, train will stop for two seconds, reverse, go up to that side, go up to where you see those two little flags up there. Do the exact same thing. Really, really easy to set up. So you've got the ones reverse, wait for t and stop and uh, stop and wait. So if you click, if you click the Q for this one, you can see the uh, you see toggle track. And then we've got the uh, track here, which is uh, chosen. You can toggle different track by pressing the button. And toggle direction, you can make it fixed direction. So if a train's only coming this way, it will then do it. If it goes that way, it won't do it. And you can decide how many seconds. So you click on here and then you type how many seconds you want it to do. Now the other one, the reverse. Again, you click the Q. Once again, you click the source piece of track. You click on it till you go through. We've got that for this piece of track here. Again, you can have a, uh, a fixed direction if you want. You click on the button and then you click which way you want it to go. We don't particularly need that. And then click apply. Then the trains will simply go up and down. And you obviously would have a platform this end, you'd have a platform that end, you have a point of set, point and click. Very, very easy. Now, if you're a steam enthusiast, you know what a runaround is, and it would be really nice if the game can do that. Now, I have kind of managed to get it to do it a couple of times, but, well, most of the time it doesn't work. Let's see if it does this time, and then I'll explain, if it does, then I'll explain how it works. Go into auto mode. So it should decouple the trains here. Good. It goes down here, it should reverse. That's what that one's for. And now it's stuck again. Oh no, it's going, it's going, it's going. So the points are set and forced to go up this way. These points are set, forced to go this way, and these points are forced to set, go this way. But you can go through them the other way. Now, it's got set to go reverse again this way here and we've got a speed thing here saying to go 99 miles an hour which should push it now this one here is an is a reverse it's put this piece of track here that's no, going too slow ah oh, that's that's a pity it needs to go a lot faster let's see if it does it It needs more logic. We had a little bit more logic in the game. Mm. 
move. It would be nice to actually show you it as you're working on camera, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. Right, press Y. Is it taking it? Yes, it seems to. But is it viable solution for doing a runaround? No. Still not really made it to there. Not entirely sure it's made it round. I think it has. Start. I don't think it's going fast enough to do anything. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Is it going to do? Is it going to do that one? <laughs> it is. I, th I think we call that a win, shall we? <laughs> okay, we could... Maybe give it 65? Is that enough still to actually get round? It is. We could, of course, put a new speed limit in here to slow that down. We know 60 does it. We do that. Do we? Well, we can pick 60 here. Which bit of track is it? Oh, we'll leave it 65. Now this one... Oh no, don't do that. I want to do this. Get this to 75. So Why are you doing that? Ah, I see, because the shift's auto is left on. Press R. Press 2. Dump. So I ain't coming to the station when I've done 75 miles an hour, supposedly. Yes, we've just made it, I'm pretty sure. I think that's too far. I'm pretty sure that's too far. It's now stuck. Oh no, it's going to do it. And then we stop, we turn around. Hopefully it's going to get enough speed up. We've hit the reverser there. And there you go, we've actually properly done it. 
Is this a viable method of doing this? No. I just thought I'd show you how I got it to work. Um, it does need a bit more logic. It's getting there though, isn't it? So, how's it work? Or not quite work. We've got to pretend the train's on AI going, going down here. We've given it a speed limit here of 99. Right, okay, we've got a speed limit of 75, yes. It goes down here, it hits the uncouple, which it then stops. Now, there is a stop. You can, there is another one of these for stopping. I've tried the uncouple and the stop at the same time, it doesn't work. Don't know why, I just refused to do anything. It didn't uncouple it, basically. So, the only way I've been able to do that is, is just to use the uncouple net, do it as you just saw it. We reduce the speed to make sure it doesn't go too far. And then it these are forced the other way. So we've used this tool here, which you just click on it. It says AI disabled AI lock. It's upside down, of course it is. But it's now locked. So it, Without that, they would be able to lock and unlock this and just change directions. We don't want that. So this one's locked in this way, but you can still go through it that way. So it then reverse that way. Same with this one, it's locked in this way. And this one's locked in straight down here. Um, you'd probably end, if you could get this working better, you'd end the track about here. Then you'd probably have another, you could, tra you could then dual track it and put normal signals like you've done here. Um, I might be able to refine it a bit more to get it working, but I'm not sure. Um, so the only commands we've got at the moment are reverse, you, sh you choose the bit of track, the speed, and the let go, the uh, uncouple. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not bad, is it? Well, guys, that's going to be it. And, uh, well, it's just a really, really quick look at uh, some of the stuff you can do. There is more. For instance, uh, as I mentioned, you can unlock these uh, switches here. And you can have and they let them just choose which track they want to be on, for instance. And uh, they will do that. Um, but, yeah, I think these are the basics. What You've seen the basics where it does. And, uh, well... I do hope you liked the episode. If you did, please press the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe and press that ding-dong bell button. You know what it does. See you next time. Bye-zee-bye. -bye.